This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to wrap up the MySQL series just by adding a little bit more polish to the uh, program we have running here. Uh, this, is, this is not actually going to involve the PHP and MySQL sides of things, but just a couple things we can do is to make sure that we don't have any kind of weird edge cases going on when we're playing our game. So the first thing I want to do is I want to jump into the main menu here um, and go into our main menu script. So it would be nice when we first load up the main menu scene to kind of limit our options depending on whether or not we are logged in. For example, if we are logged in, then we don't need to register or log in. And if we are not logged in, we shouldn't be able to play our game. So what we can do is we're going to add a couple more uh, properties up here. I'm going to add public button register button. I'm going to add a public button login button and a public button play button. So with these three buttons, what we can do is we can simply set their interactability based on whether or not we're logged in. For example, our register button, if we're already logged in, we don't need to register. So we can say register button dot interactable equals not db manager dot logged in. The same goes for the login button. If we're logged in, we don't need to log in, so we can say login button dot interactable equals not db manager dot logged in. And lastly, the play button, we only want to be able to activate when we are logged in, so here we'll say play button dot interactable equals db manager dot logged in. It's kind of the inverse of the other two. Jumping back to Unity, we can go to our canvas and we can add these three buttons in the inspector. So register, we'll go to the register button, login goes to the login button, and the play game goes to play. With those in place, I'll save our scene and hit play. And now we see that play game isn't available while no one's logged in. However, if I log in, I can say board to bits password and log in. And now I can actually play the game. And it's not until I play an exit, which therefore logs me out as well, that I can either choose to register or log in again. The other thing that would be nice is that on our login and our register pages, when we type our password in, we can see it and everyone in the world can see it. And it, obviously in this case, I'm just using the word password. It's not anything that I'm securing anything with. But if we want to keep that invisible to others, especially when your game is out in the wild and you have people that want to log in without exposing their credentials, you can do that re really easily with the UI system. If I go to the register menu scene and I go to my password input input field, in the input field component, we see here content type and there's a few options here. The one we're going to go to is password and what that will do is it gets rid of the single line, it, it defaults to a single line, there's no option there for a text field, but now when I hit play and I type into the password, it comes up as stars. You'll see in the text here in input field that it is actually still logging character strokes, but as far as anyone looking at the screen in the player view would see, it's just stars and it is a, it's a more secured system for typing in your password. So we'll do that there and save that, and I will do that as well in the login menu. Switch that to password as well. And now the, both of those are protected. Lastly, as you're quickly iterating, it would be kind of nice to be able to kind of pass control from one input field to another using the tab key like you can on normal web forms. Unfortunately, this isn't something that's built into Unity, but we can add it relatively easily with a C-sharp script. So I'm going to create a new C-sharp script and call it tab between. And I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio, reload. And I'm going to be using Unity Engine.UI because this is going to use a lot of the input field um, APIs. And we're going to have two uh, public, I'm going to have a public input field called next field, which is where we're going to tab to. And we're going to have just a private input field called my field, which is the field that this component exists uh, with on the same object. 
In fact, what I'm also going to do is say require component type of input field, just to make sure that we're attaching this to an input field. In theory, we could extend this eventually to include other types of UI, but right now all we really care about are these input fields. So with that, what we're going to do is on start, we're going to say my field equals get component input field so that we have that reference in there and we'll manually assign the next field reference so we're kind of controlling the navigation order on each um, scene that we have. And then for the update, what we're going to do is we're going to check is this current um, is this current input field active right now? And if so, if we've hit tab as well, then we're going to pass it pass control to the next input field. So what we'll say in the update method is if my field dot is focused and input dot get key down key code dot tab. So if we're in this input field and you hit the tab button, then in that case, next field dot activate input field, and that will pass control. What we might also want to do here, just to double check, is that on the off chance that we forgot to assign something to this next field, we should probably just eliminate this component so that we don't have any unassigned object errors. So I'm going to say here, um, if next field equals null, destroy this, just, just destroy the component, don't destroy the entire um, game object, and return. We don't need to actually worry about assigning this variable. Okay, so with that in place, we can jump back to Unity. We do have to do a little bit of manual work here for these. So on the name input field, I'm going to add component of tab between, and I'm going to assign the password input field here, and vice versa. I'm actually going to go to the password input field, add component tab between, and put in the name input field. So now we can actually tab right between those back and forth. We'll save that. Likewise, I'll go to the registration menu, and we'll do the same thing here. Go to the name input field, tab between, pass in the password field, and for the password field, tab between, name input field. Save that, and now I can hit play. And we see if I go to, for example, this name input field, I start typing here, and then I tab, I can go to this one, I can start typing in a password, tab back to this one. So those are just a few options, hiding your passwords, um, controlling what you can do on the main menu when you first start, and being able to actually tab between input fields, just to give you a little bit more polish on this system. Just some tips and tricks to make your games even a little bit more polished as you go. Thanks again so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the series. Hope it helps you with your game development, and I'll see you next time.